We're talking about fictional films that created real social change on today's BFD. So grab some popcorn, here we go. A few weeks back we looked at documentaries that changed the world and now we're going to do the same thing with fictional films. There's plenty that come along but only a few have real big off-screen changes. So let's look at a few of them and to help us along is our friend and film critic for The Wrap, Alonzo Duralde. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks for having me back. Let's get right into it. What's our first film? Uh, well, you know, Brokeback Mountain, I think for a lot of audiences that maybe didn't think same-sex relationships carried the same weight or, you know, uh, were as important, they cried at the end of that movie and they suddenly realized, wait, the, the only thing that's keeping these guys apart is society. They're compatible, they want to be together, but the world won't let them. And if you realize that you're part of the world that's not letting them, then maybe that's going to induce you to change your mind a little and think about, you know, how you treat people and, and you know, what you think love can be. All right, uh, what do we got next? I would have to go with Norma Ray. If you want to look at a movie that really made the impact of, of organized labor, and you realize that you know union organizing isn't just this sort of you know shadowy socialist plot, but it's it's something that really impacts working families and and you know the conditions under which they have to to do their work and the money that they get for doing it. Okay, and finally, what's number one on your list? Well, the best years of our lives from the 1940s, I think, is a really powerful film. It came out right at the end of World War II and could not have been more timely in terms of addressing the issues that returning veterans were going through and also their loved ones. That's perhaps most vividly represented by Harold Russell, who had actually lost both arms in the war and played a, a character not unlike himself in the film with hooks for hands. And I think for a lot of people, if they didn't know someone personally who was uh, uh, handicapped by the war in some way, either physically or, or you know, mentally or spiritually, uh, this was a way to sort of see it from a safe distance, to understand that it was okay and that the people who might have come back broken of body were still mentally there, were still, you know, the, the people People they loved. So it's kind of like Born on the Fourth of July, but with a real life Ron Kovacs in the in the lead, and, and 30 years before. Or something uh, like yeah, and, and but I also I think you know Born on the Fourth of July came out decades after Vietnam was over, and we yeah. were still sort of coping with it. This is a movie that came out in 1947, so I mean these were all very fresh issues. You know, you could walk out of the theater, and there would be you know returning vets. I'm trying to think of a film that dealt with those themes of the current situation in Afghanistan and Iraq, and I'm sort of not coming up with anything. There's one that I can think of, which is Erwin uh, Winkler's Home of the Brave. Uh, 50 Cent starred in it, and one of the Jessicas, Alba Beal, I, you know, I was hard, getting them mistaken. I think, unfortunately, it, it, it tries too hard to be another Best Years of Our Lives, mm -hmm. and that movie's such a classic that it's really kind of hard to retrace those footsteps. But, you know, points for trying, certainly. There you go. I just thought of one, I just thought of one, and it's a recent film that actually cast a veteran of a recent American war was Battleship. And it was <laughs> and it was a terrible movie, but it cast an actual Iraq War veteran who unfortunately oh, that's was right. missing his legs. Yes. And they make a big deal out of that. And I'm kinder to Battleship than most, but yeah, it's a very silly movie. How but yeah, you kind of that movie because I was not bored, and that's my new bar for that kind of thing. <laughs> oh, okay. So what is it about narrative films that documentaries can't do? When you're seeing a documentary, you go in kind of knowing what it's about. You know what subject matter is going to be covered, and maybe you won't go see a movie because oh, I don't, I don't care about those people, or I don't care about that problem. But in a narrative film with you know maybe some actors that you recognize, or something else that's dragging you into the theater or making you leave it on that channel, then you know you kind of get carried away, and before you realize it, your mind is being changed for you. You are being opened up to a new way of looking at things that you weren't expecting. Once again, Alonzo, thank you so much for giving us your time and your viewpoints. We really appreciate it. Always a pleasure. You know, something we come back to a lot is that change comes from ideas, and getting those ideas across can take many different forms. Sometimes it's a petition, sometimes it's a documentary, sometimes it's a major motion picture release about robots and aliens. You've heard from Alonzo, now we want to hear from you. What movies have changed the way you see the world? Leave your comments below and let us know. For BFD, I'm David Park, and don't forget to subscribe.